So this video is about springs in parallel and springs in series. If you've seen these equations before, but you want to know the concepts where these equations come from, this is a good video to watch. A lot of people just memorize these equations, but I found that it's really good to know, you know where these equations come from because if you know the details of where these equations come from, you're really going to have a firm grip on all the little details of what you do when you see springs in parallel and series and what it all means. So we have this word equivalent in engineering, equivalency. And it's a very, very important word that you'll see in many of your classes. It's not just in mechanical classes like statics, but it's also in electrical classes. So say we had the fraction 81 over 108. Now this is a big disgusting fraction, but it's actually just 0.75, 75%. And we can see that because 81 is just 3 times 27, and 108 is just 4 times 27. And if, we, and if we just eliminate this common factor of 27, we can simplify this to a much nicer looking 3 over 4, which is still equal to that same 0.75. So this is the idea of equivalency. This is much simpler. It's much nicer to look at. It's much easier to look at and know what it means, the 0.75. This is our original thing. It's disgusting. It's big. It's brutal. We don't know exactly what it means. But we've simplified it to this equivalent form right here. So equivalency is when two things look different, but they act the exact same way. So a lot of times in statics, we'll see something disgusting that looks like that, and we'll want to simplify it to something much nicer to look at. But again, they both act in the exact same way. That's exactly what we want to do with these spring systems. These three springs look gross. What we really want to do is we really want to simplify this system right here into just one spring that acts the exact same way as this does. And when I say acts the same way, I'm saying that this simplification will stretch the same as this original and have the same force as this original system. And same thing for springs in series. If you ask me, this looks even more disgusting than the springs in parallel. We want to find one spring that acts the exact same way as this trio, this system of series springs. So let's dive into it. Let's focus on the parallel springs right here. So let's say I grab this bar right here and pull it to the left. These three springs are going to fight against me. So if I pull with the force of 10 newtons or something, then this one may pull with 2, this one may pull with 3, and then this one may pull with 5 newtons. I know that the forces in these springs will probably be different because each one of their stretches, each one of them stretches the same. But each one of their k values is different. So therefore, the force each one of them outputs will be different. So if I pull with 10, I'm going to feel 10 newtons of force pulling against me. This entire system pulls with 10 newtons of force. So don't you think that the equivalent spring should pull with 10 newtons of force? So let's mathematize that we'll say that the force that the equivalent spring produces must be equal to all of the forces of those component springs added up. So that is the statement we open with. Again, our equivalent spring that we're looking to create must act the exact same way as this system in terms of both force and stretch. Next, what I do is just, instead of writing the force for each one of them, I write kx. 
is kx is equal to force. And we end up with this statement. So it's easy to tell that each one of these springs here will stretch by the same amount x. Well, therefore, our equivalent spring must stretch, must stretch by that same distance as well. So therefore, these numbers right here, each one of these x's, should be the same. All of these are the same, and therefore, our equivalent must act in the same way as well. So therefore, each one of these x's is equal to each other, is the same number, and therefore we can cancel it out of this equation. And if we do that, we are left with this result. So I know if I see some springs in parallel, I can just add up each of the stiffnesses to simplify this parallel system into one spring that acts the exact same. This spring right here with the k value of 150 will stretch the same as our original system and it will create the same force as our original system. And of course this again going back to equiv equivalency this looks a lot more simpler than that. And, it, and this often helps in solving engineering problems, dealing with the simpler version. So let's talk about our series springs. And let's imagine again that I stretch this whole system. I pull this end to the left and this end to the right. Of course, you can imagine that each spring is going to stretch such that this entire system stretches. So when I grab hold of the system and stretch it, I'm going to feel my hands move away some total distance. And this total distance is simply just the sum of the stretches of each one of our individual springs. So looking at our equivalent spring that we're looking to create, this equivalent spring must stretch this complete entire distance as well. So I'll say that the stretch of our equivalent spring must equal the total stretch that our system behaves with. So this right here is the statement that we start with. So similar to what we did last time, I'm going to rewrite each term here in terms of Hooke's Law. I'm going to take this equation and get the x by itself. And if I do that, I'll just end up with this. I had this before, but I'll write it in terms of f over k. I have the force that that equivalent spring is producing divided by the k value, the stiffness of the equivalent spring that we're looking to create. And same thing for the rest of our terms here. I'm just writing it in terms of f over k from our Hooke's law here. So here's what we do next. Imagine a point here, an atom of this rope. And imagine doing a free body diagram on this atom. Well, I'm going to have the force from spring 2 pulling to the right and the force from spring 1 pulling to the left. And since this blue point right here on the rope is not moving, I mean I'm holding, I'm kind of stretching this entire spring system and nothing's moving, everything's in equilibrium. Because of that, Newton's second law says that these two forces must equal each other. And the same argument can be said here. This blue point right here isn't moving, and therefore I conclude that the force in spring 2 must equal the force in spring 3 for there to be balance, for that blue point not to be moving. So what I conclude here is that the force in each one of these springs must actually be equal. And therefore, for our equivalent spring to act the exact same way, its force must be equal to the force produced in each one of these springs. So all in all, the force of our equivalent spring must be equal to the force that each one of our springs produce, they must all be the same number.
and therefore I can cancel them out of the equation. And if we do that, we'll end up with this equation right here. So if I had these three stiffnesses here, and I wanted to bundle this entire series spring system into one spring that acts the same way, it moves with the same total displacement, and it creates the same force, we would just plug and chug this equation right here. And if we do that math, we'll get 13.64 newtons per meter. And that will be the stiffness of our equivalent spring here. And a lot of people ask, whoa, why, why would you want to put springs in series? The stiffness that results is a lot less than the stiffness that would be produced if we put the springs, the same springs, in parallel. I mean, why would you want that? You never know, you know? When people build stuff, they may not be trying to maximize the force. They may be trying to, you know, maximize the stretch for, for whatever reason you can imagine. So, this is how you find an equivalent spring. If you see a bunch of springs in parallel, and this is how you find an equivalent spring if you see a bunch of springs in series. And these equations work no matter how many springs you have. You can just imagine that you, know, you keep adding terms here and over here. You just keep adding 1 over K4, 1 over K5, etc. So, two important takeaways here. Springs in parallel combine forces, their forces add up, and they all move with the same stretch slash compression. And springs in series, they combine each one of their stretches or compressions, but they each have the same force. These are very, very important details that you want to make sure you have ingrained, because sometimes you'll be working the opposite way. You'll be taking this guy in splitting it back down, you know? You want to really have internalized these details so you can really work fluidly with spring systems. And the best way to internalize this stuff is to derive these equations right here. See if you can take yourself through the same conversation we just did, the same arguments, the same visualizations, and reproduce these results. Because if you can do that, you know, you're not going to get tricked. You're going to really know all the details of the story, and that's the best way to do it. All right, so I hope that made sense. If it didn't, feel free to leave any questions you may have in the comments.